never change No matter how far I go I'll always be the same Even if I told the world I will never change No matter how far I go I'll always be the same Even if I told the world Tally ho there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the show and today I'll be reviewing Azusa's Zenbook UX 305 FA. So this is Azusa's or Asus or whatever you want to call it. Zenbook UX 305 FA. I'll call this an Ultrabook. Slim, it's beautiful as they say. Now I have a white Xbox, I have a white computer, I have white headphones, so it's gonna be no surprise to you that I love this color. This is ceramic white. You can also get it in Aurora Metallic and Obsidian Grey. Now this is my choice. It's milled out of a block of aluminium. It's only 1.23 millimeters thin. So compared to a um, Surface Pro 3 here, which is pretty much the same size as the Surface Pro 4, you can see there. The thicknesses, it's a little bit thicker. And this is compared to a XPS 15 and you can see it's a lot thinner and lighter. The build quality is amazing. Underneath there you have the four rubber feet and you have the speakers there, which are ice powered Bang & Olufsen tuned speakers. They're not too bad, I'll get to those later. As I said, I love this white. It's a beautiful white. It's not an off-white or a cream or something like that. It's really pure ceramic white. You have little touches like the chamfered edges on the trackpad here, all aluminium. And if you know anything about aluminium, you'll know that it's actually hard to paint aluminium, but this is a nice matte finish. It's really beautiful. And I can't speak highly enough of this design. I would definitely love to get one of these. You'll definitely get attention using one of these and um, that's if you want that sort of thing. But um, it's design and build quality is beautiful. It's not much more to say about it. Up there you have the 720p webcam as usual. The bezel on it's not too thick. It's got a fair bit of forehead and chin there, but the side bits aren't too bad. And I guess you can compare this basically to the MacBook. That's probably its main competitor, but it's a lot cheaper. So you can pick these up for about, I think I saw one online for about $900. So it's not super cheap, but it's a really competitive price point there. And when you compare it to the price of the MacBook, and this is pretty much has the same silicon inside and this has a load more ports, even though it doesn't have USB-C, it's got a lot more ports on it. It's probably a more useful computer than the MacBook. On the right hand side, you have battery indicator lights there. You have mini HDMI. You have a USB 3, and this is a quick charge USB 3, and you have the power jack. On the other side, you have two USB 3s and an SD card slot. Now, the SD card doesn't go in very far. In fact, it doesn't even go in halfway. So, if you can see that there, it sticks out quite a lot. So even though it doesn't have USB type C, it still has a load of ports. It's got the SD card slot as well. So you're well covered for ports and you won't have to carry around adapters and have a octopus of a computer like you would with the MacBook. But if USB type C is important to you, well, this doesn't have it. As I said, I seen one online for $8.99 and that's Australian, so, so you're probably talking just over 500 American. This one here has an auto IPS 13.3 inch full HD display. You can also get a QHD option, obviously that costs more, and it's the better screen. This one has four gigabytes of RAM. You can get up to eight gigabytes of RAM. Make sure you get the most amount of RAM you can because you won't be upgrading it. This one has an Intel Core M 5Y10C, and you can also get a 5 y 7 now there's not much difference between those two and uh, they both have Intel 5300 graphics. This has 128 gigabyte SSD. You can get up to 512 gigabyte SSD. Your usual 802.11ac and Bluetooth 4. And it has a 45 watt hour battery. Of course you have the 720p webcam like I said before. And it has ice powered Bang & Olsen tuned speakers. So for its price, you get quite a lot. And considering it's so thin and light, and usually these thin and light premium Ultrabooks do cost a bit more than your regular laptops, it's priced competitively. Having that Intel Core M has its advantages and disadvantages. The advantages are it's quiet, 
it's virtually silent. Well, it is silent. It doesn't have any fans. It doesn't get very hot. But the downside is the Intel Core M is not the most powerful chip out there and you won't be playing any AAA titles. But you can certainly play your casual games and do productivity and surf the web and watch videos and so on. The keyboard has 1.5 millimeters travel and actually when you open it, it raises the keyboard slightly. If you could see that there, it raises it at the back so it gives you an optimum typing angle. I don't have any problems with it. It's, it says it's 1.5 millimeters travel. It doesn't feel like it. It actually feels a little bit shallower, but I trust that it is 1.5 millimeters travel. Um, it's certainly good to type on. I have no complaints with it, and it's not very loud either, so that's good. The trackpad's another story. It's nice. I mean, you've got that chamfered edge around the trackpad there, and this is really beautiful design, this thing. As I said before, it really looks beautiful. That feels very nice and smooth when you use this trackpad. That's one thing that's good about it. But it does feel a little bit vague sometimes and sometimes it lags a little bit. This may be improved with software over time. Hopefully that's the case. Um, I don't know if you can hear the click there, the clicks. It's not as muted as some, but it's not overly loud there. I'd say it's a decent trackpad, but it's definitely not my favorite. The screen is quite good actually you get good viewing angles i mean you do lose contrast at about 45 there but certainly straight on you get a good nice vivid panel it's not the brightest screen out there i think if you really want a good screen definitely get the qhd version this screen's decent it's not bad but it's not going to be as good as the qhd and it's very vivid um it's not the brightest as i said uh, the viewing angles are good but they're not great i mean once you go past 45 it starts to wash out a bit and this is a decent screen don't get me wrong but the qhd model will be a lot better than this the colors are pretty good it's pretty neutral they're not it's not really warm and it's not really blue either and it's not a touch screen as well so and the qhd is not a touch screen oh just one thing also on the keyboard it's not backlit if you need a backlit keyboard this is not the one for you but the one thing about the screen is it doesn't suck much juice because this has got pretty good battery life it's only a 45 watt hour battery in here but oh, i could easily get eight hours no problem you could probably stretch that to nine that's just productivity web surfing video and, and so on now this isn't a gaming beast so you're not going to be gaming with it that much but um obviously if you start playing the casual games and so on it will suck the juice a bit more but the pentium m is pretty power efficient anyway so the battery life is really good it's pretty much all day for me and i have no complaints about that the performance well considering you can only get a qhd or 1080p screen you're not going to be watching 4k content the pentium m does struggle with some 4k content so that's not really an issue you can play your casual games your football manager your minecraft and other such casual games it's definitely no problems with web surfing productivity you could do light photoshop work and you could probably get away with 1080p video editing although it's not recommended for video editing there you can see the ssd speeds are 468 megabytes per second read and 309 megabytes per second write so so they're pretty standard ssd speeds so it's pretty good but certainly if you want something small and light you're an executive you're a student it's got lots of ports it's easy to carry around it does most of the things you want it's certainly a great device in that way the sound well at 100 percent it does distort a little and it's quite loud at 100 percent but knock it down to 90 percent that distortion goes away but it's not that loud i mean the jump between 90 percent and 100 percent is it's actually quite a lot but when you have it at 90 percent it's fairly loud and and the clarity is quite good actually for having such small speakers and being such a small device so in conclusion i would just say this is a great device for its price it's priced competitively it looks great it's great for someone that's on the go to want something thin and light compared to the macbook if i put the qhd screen on this i'll take this over the macbook no problems there and it's definitely much more value i love the look of it i think it looks as good and i think you can do a lot worse than this i really like this laptop and definitely if you want something that's ultra portable it's worthy of considering 
So that's it, my review of the Zeus ZenBook UX305 FA. I'd like to really thank you guys for watching. I've got a lot more tech content coming soon, so please subscribe. And until next time, guys, tally ho.